Jeremy, in addition to Here Comes Peter Cottontail, hopping down the bunny trail. We have, we have our, a show, too. We have Food News <laughs> and Shoes. That's the name of the show. And yeah. our Food News this week, we're going to be dealing with Mayor Bloomberg and his big sugary drink controversy, right? Ooh, Trying to make it illegal. Gate. Also, can advertising make you fat? It's a big deal. Hmm. I know hamburgers and mm -hmm. Easter candy can. <laughs> well, so can crab cakes. And Father Jim Sitchko from Kentucky, or from Richmond, Kentucky yeah, at St. Mark's. Mark's. He's got a, a great recipe for us and also a little bit of news on the Pope. So All stay right. tuned. Welcome to Kentucky's largest commercial restaurant equipment and supply store. Seaworth Superstore is a 15,000 square foot chef's treasure chest. Seaworth Superstore is the store for those in the restaurant industry, churches, and catering. Find chefware, large equipment, refrigeration units, about anything needed for a volume event. Seaworth Superstore, in business since 1954, offering free local delivery, so come on in and get hooked immediately. And a complete line of chef apparel. Seaworth Superstore, located at 1403 Versailles Road and SeaworthSuperstore.com. This Easter, let your family know where the food comes from. Critchfield Meats, family owned and operated since 1969. The meats are fresh and hand cut. The side items are made from scratch. Here's what you can expect from us for your family dinner. A semi-bonus leg of lamb, standing rib roast, beef tenderloin, country ham or spiral cut ham, and so much more to choose from. Make your Easter dinner one your family's gonna remember for years to come. You're gonna notice the difference in the taste and the tenderness, I guarantee it. Worldly influenced, locally inspired. Azure Restaurant and Patio, contemporary fine dining and a relaxed atmosphere right here in Lexington. Modern award-winning dishes with a distinctive Kentucky twist from the mind of nationally recognized chef Jeremy Ashby. Voted best fine dining in Lexington. Azure is chef created, chef driven, and Kentucky proud since day one. Taste something unique at Azure Restaurant and Patio, Beaumont Center in Lexington. And see chef Jeremy Ashby and Sylvia Lovely on the Food News and Chews, Sunday night at 11 on Fox 56. Why do chefs choose Lion's Farm beef? It's consistent, it's delicious, um, it's got great tenderness, and it's really good for you. This nutritional element of making healthy animals for healthy eating is a big component about why their beef is so delicious. I feel so lucky to be a chef in Kentucky because the best way to express care for someone is to make them something to eat, and I get to do that every single day. Lion's Farm beef, available at Critchfield Meats and lionsfarm.com. Jeremy, does this make my butt look big? <laughs> <laughs> what is that thing? <laughs> That's my bunny, bunny tail. tail I got and look here, we've got Easter candy, we've got bunnies and again got rabbits you know, and chicks are fighting each other. Are those marshmallow Bad peeps? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, I I, I'm not even going to tell you what's actually in those things. <laughs> they so good. They so good. Well, let's get on to food news. If I can get up it, with a tail, that's a little bit different here. Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, what's the news? What's well, the news, I think Jeremy? we have a pope. Oh, I'm robbed of my will to live. <laughs> <laughs> I had applied for that job. Father Jim was supposed to put in a word for me. Yes, I know. I, we expected to be, oh, have two job one. openings, <laughs> you know, this week, and one in Lexington, one in Richmond, and. You know, we're both here, right? Yeah, well, there's another one in Venezuela. <laughs> That's right. Mm -hmm. Which is good because 50% of the population are, are Latin American now, so it's good hey. to have a, you know, a, a Latin Pope. It's, uh, they're coming into their own, Bo aren't they? From Italy, yes. Yeah. Um, so this dude, Francis, is now the man. Francis, right? yeah. All right, we've got to be nice to him. Hey, big news. Um, it, it's big news now, and it's going to continue for a while, and that's Bloomberg who's no, also known as the nanny of yes. New York City because we, he wants to control everybody's sugary drink intake. That's right. You know, about a year ago, <laughs> last bunnies? May, he was talking about li you know, limiting the sizes of mm -hmm. soft drinks and sugary sodas. You could get down to about 20, or was it 16 ounces of the limit? Or is it less You know, even that's part of the problem. That? Mm -hmm. What is the court, limit? Right? Court struck it down. Just as the restaurants, and they had a three-month uh, grace period, as they were getting ready to do it, Starbucks and all those people were all like in a tizzy about it. Mm -hmm. The courts ruled it unconstitutional. Said it was arbitrary and capricious. 
bad news. You can't do that. Okay, because right. loopholes and all kinds well, of stuff. I mean, how do you it, govern it, Think that? about it if you're if you're a business owner and you actually if you actually make a living on selling drinks mm -hmm. or sodas or coffee, how do you stop that kind of commerce? And then how do you control it? I mean, it's, it can't be more than that little button you press on the top of your soda that says it's diet. Because diet sodas are not regulated. You can have non-sugary drinks yeah, feel... larger than 20 ounces, but nothing, you know, nothing that's really sugary like a full-fledged soda. So I don't know. What he did mm -hmm. was create awareness, which he is did. the point, right? Yeah. Considering now 60% of New York New Yorkers are obese. No, yeah, that's 40 right. 40% of now, New York and children. What's are been obese. proven, and really, uh, there, there's three or four issues that come out here: truth or myth about the relationship of sugar to obesity. I say sugar is really mm -hmm. bad for you. Yeah, it looks like it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and but you know, a lot of people don't make that linkage yet. Mm -hmm. uh, the power of local mayors, or even companies. Now, this brings to mind what Whole Foods has done with GMOs. How much change agent can you be without making government, you know, make the change or letting people go? What are the limits, you know? Because with the GMO controversy, Whole Foods is really taking the lead role, probably going to revolutionize labeling. Well, yeah, they're the trendsetters are the ones mm -hmm. that are saying that we are we are going to go ahead and and do what you know Prop 37 in California mm -hmm. was supposed to do, which was label GMOs. They're going to go ahead and make it mandatory in their stores, which yeah. is spectacular. So, so we've got a whole lot of things going on out there. And then what about advertising making us fat? Well, that's what they're saying, they're, or that's what everybody is being yeah. blamed well, for. So yeah, you know, not directly eating a billboard, but because no. a billboard is like right up there. Uh, right. That's the issue. Is uh, what they found is the correlation in the number of billboards advertising fast foods and sugary stuff in highly obese neighborhoods. Right. Which you think would be a good business plan because yeah. if they sell a lot of that product in a neighborhood, why yeah. would you not? Yeah. You so put that was more market out. share than it was anything else that uh, you know that had to do with that. Sort of like the Mediterranean diet has now been proven to be the right diet, mm -hmm. but it was done after, you know, rigorous scientific study. And that's one of the things about our viewers. They don't, you know, how would you know and discern the truth that's going on uh, about a lot of this stuff out there that's going on? I mean, mm -hmm. it's really confusing, you know? So we need to clear some of that up. So uh, let's see. Uh, magazine articles, things just appearing everywhere, Jeremy. Homegrown in Kentucky and Owsley County, that's in UK Alumni Magazine. Subaru's Drive Magazine uh, is talking about farm to table. And one New York Times article said food magazines are the only ones selling. That's right, and Duh. food shows are the only ones selling like <laughs> ours, right? Well, yeah, you know, our million trillion... I, I think it's because food is so visual. I mean, people love this well, to look through magazines, see pictures. It's like, I think most cookbooks are never read. They're just coffee book tables that sit there and people well, look at the great food photography. And people finally discovered what was real out there. Food is very, very important yeah. to uh, almost everything that we do, including, you know, Easter candy. Look at all the stuff that, you know, we... You ate all mine. I know. Do you have a hamburger by any chance? <laughs> I need something. Well, we already ate candy. We might as well go for it, right? <laughs> what I'll do for this show. <laughs> anyway, we got Father Jim coming up from St. Mark's in Richmond. He's a great personality, yeah. so you got to check him out. All right. We'll see you just after break. This Easter, let your family know where the food comes from. Critchfield Meats, family owned and operated since 1969. The meats are fresh and hand cut. The side items are made from scratch. Here's what you can expect from us for your family dinner. A semi-boneless leg of lamb, standing rib roast, beef tenderloin, country ham, or spiral cut ham, and so much more to choose from. Make your Easter dinner one your family's gonna remember for years to come. You're gonna notice the difference in the taste and the tenderness, I guarantee it. Advertise your product or service on shows like this one. Contact Media 7 Broadcasting today. Call 859-317-4565 or email sales at m7bg.com. Reach potential new customers in the Louisville, Lexington, and other Central Kentucky areas. Get your new ad produced for free by Media 7's audio and video professionals. Call 859-317-4565 today and let Media 7 create a marketing plan for you. Jeremy, the restaurant startup business is challenging. We should know. That's right. In business since 1954, SeaWorld Superstore is the place to begin. Reconditioned equipment and the lease to purchase program can get you in and going in no time. Seaworth, with its dedicated staff, can help you plan with CAD services that provide a successful layout. Dan and his team will help you fill in the blanks with everything from soft drink machines to exhaust hoods. Come to Seaworth Superstore and make your dreams come true. Located at 1403 Versailles Road and SeaworthSuperstore.com. Hello, my name is Bob. Recently, I switched my business phone service to Glow Telecom. 
Now I'm saving over 50% on my monthly phone bills, over $2,000 a year. And I have a PBX phone system that would have cost me over $10,000. Unlimited calling to the U.S. and Canada with no long distance charges. If you want to put money back in your wallet, call Glow Telecom today. Call Glow Telecom at 888-428-0984. 888-428-0984. Welcome to back. Welcome back to Food News and Juice. <laughs> we're here with Father Jim. Hello. Yeah. Good and uh, and we're so excited to have him here. He I does know. so much. We'll have a hard time fitting it into eight Father minutes. Jim Sitchko from, uh, well, Richmond. He's yeah. from St. Mark's. And he's such a community activist. Oh. He really kind of puts a spotlight on that community by doing, doing a lot, a you know, bringing in some very that. big talent into yeah. the community and, and, and showcasing it, uh, you know, for a great cause. Yeah. yeah. But one thing first. Sure. Yeah. First thing, I'm wearing red. Oh, yes. Because by the time this airs, we will probably know who the Pope is, but I'm going to put my application in real fast. <laughs> and I may not be old enough, right, but I need right. your help, okay? Oh, yes, I mean, yes. you have that sort of inner, you know, divine, anyway. Divine intervention. Yeah, I know yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, apparently the ad says you have to have charisma uh -huh. and grit. Now, I have no charisma, but you put an S on the end of the grit. Yeah, and we got and that And you covered. and I got it no, covered. No, no and, and they make... Yeah, there's what? plenty what? of cheese oh, in there, right? Cheese, so cheese yeah. grits, the <laughs> monks, and everything. This, yes. could, this could be a good rain. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what do you think? Um, we'll keep working on it. All right. You now know? there's another job open. Oh, you uh, let me know soon. It's in I Venezuela. I see smoke coming out of a chimney <laughs> oh, yes, out there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, oh, Father yes. Jim. Oh, great. Oh. I think <laughs> what we're going to find is there's actually going to be a job opening in Richmond, Kentucky. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> yes. That's what'll really happen, darn. I really wanted that job. But it anyway. is a joy to be here. Yeah. It's an honor. Thanks. I I'm excited. Uh, tell us about your church and how you found Richmond and about the things that you sure. do. Sure. Actually, I, I was assigned to Richmond as as part of our church's yeah. process as we get assigned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. So I, I was assigned to, to Richmond nine years ago. Where are you wow. from? Wow. I'm Where? originally from Texas, uh, born in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. but a priest for this diocese of Lexington was ordained about 15 years ago. So there was an opening in Richmond and I got called in and the bishop said, this is where you're going. And I said, mm -hmm. all right. Went down the interstate, found the church. What a great little community. You know, Wonderful. Just one small stop on the way to the top. Uh, <laughs> I know. It goes he's from 400,000. Yeah. Yeah, yes. 400,000, the process is. Oh, yes. Well, the, well they'll getting be, you there. There, there. there are, within our diocese, there are about you know, 70, 80 priests. Uh -huh. Okay. And so among those priests, it's kind of like a little chessboard. You know, they, <laughs> they figure out who yeah. needs to go where and they kind of, but once they assign one to one place, that leaves an opening to another. And so it's kind of what we call the domino effect. Yeah. So I got to Richmond and, um, you know, the, the church has about six, 700 families and um, really just school, yeah. a college ministry at EKU, you know, and, yeah. and then we've That's started more fun these. That's than being the Pope. It, it, it's a <laughs> lot less stressful, I'll tell you that. It's a very special church. It's been in the community for a long time. In fact, over 100 years. My parents, yeah. Robert and Janet Ashby, were married That's there. true. Oh, oh my goodness, we didn't know that. That's what, awesome. what a neat history. That is yeah. a neat history. And, and um, you know, the, it's been neat having these celebrities and people come well, and visit. tell us about that. How do you, you do this? are amazing. <laughs> no, it's just through a lot of perseverance. I'll tell you exactly. Exactly yeah. how it started right. was uh, we we had uh, I inherited and the parish did a, a large debt due to a building um, plan that took off yeah. before I got there, and I woke up one day to figure out how could we get this mm -hmm. funding mm -hmm. this debt down, and I came up with this plan called an evening among friends, and where we would invite people of all faith traditions, all religions for an evening just of fun Great. and fellowship perfect. and um, invite a celebrity who would come in and help raise money for us. But the kicker is, is that part of the proceeds would go back to the community. Wow. And um, we Some started that. Names. Some... Regis Philbin started us off. Yeah. Uh, from Regis, we went to Bill Cosby. Well, Who's from, that? That's right. From <laughs> Bill Cosby, we went to Martin Short. From Martin Short, we went to Natalie Cole. From Natalie Cole, we went to <laughs> Dolly Parton. Yeah. And then back to Natalie Cole. Then Harry Connick Jr. Yeah. Then yeah. Laura Bush. Yeah. Then back to Harry Connick Jr. Then uh, Chef John Besh. Yes. And then from Even Chef there. John Besh to Donny Osmond. I remember that. And then, yeah, that's recent. 
Well, Who knows what's Jeremy next? and I are available, hey. you know, not before 8 o'clock Monday morning. <laughs> that's, right. <laughs> that's right. No, that's just, that's a great lineup of talent you brought sure. to, to the community. And it really, I like the way he's involved the community in it. That's oh, really yeah, what builds, right. the, builds the foundation. Let's talk about, yeah, what, go ahead. Or pays no, off the no, foundation. No, right, well, well, I think one of the things is, it's really weird. I've always had... Um, this fascination with cooking. Right. Okay. okay. And, and that's that why I brought in Chef John Besh is because uh -huh. I always have had this. I, I always awesome. remember as a young child watching these cooking shows with like Julia Childs. And, and there the, were few of them. There then. were few, yeah. very few. Right and, and, and I was just amazed how they put everything together, you know, and and uh, I I can't cook. OK, <laughs> but but no one knows that. But no one knows that. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because I pretend I think I'm I can exposed. cook, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, and that's why, you know, when uh, the chef was here, we loved coming out to Azure. And, you know, I brought his what sous honor. chefs, aren't they? Uh, yes. And yes. we all sat around. And I was like, you know, oh, yes, this is my favorite dish. I can prepare this, you know, and all this. Yeah. Thank God that they did not say, well, let's go over your house tonight and cook because I'd be in a big problem. Tell us about food and, yeah. and what happens about the Pope. Oh, sure, you sure. Know, well, first of all, who are sitting that, may not be by the time. Well, let because me, why? You let me tell, tell you something. Story. Let me tell you those. I know that there's a group of uh, nuns who are cooking and preparing all those meals. And let me tell you, if if the conclave goes long, those meals start getting shorter <laughs> and more sparse. And, and and it goes from nice pasta to, to bread and water. Right, let's tighten the wrenches a little bit. Right. Yeah, that's right. Let's get a move on it here. You that's know? one way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Out of it. That, that's right. You know, but food has always played. What, what's very interesting is I go speaking all across the yeah, United States. Yeah, did you I, say, like, how many? Yeah, I mean, um, we were just in Atlanta. In I was New in Orleans. Atlanta, New Orleans. Yeah. Um, but, but one of the things that... You're a that singer I, and a storyteller. Yeah. Yeah, the voice it, of laughter, storytelling, and praise. Exactly. And one of the things that I find is, is that one thing that connects with all people across the board is food. It does. It you know, and I connector. always speak he's about food. He's on to food. us. He's got, he's got our stick. It's true. It's <laughs> true. You know, I, I, love, I love to eat and I love to dine. And for us, for my heritage as... As Italian, um, my mom is Italian from a town called Consenza in, in Italy. Um, you know, food was an important part and is an important part. You know, when, when I come home, mm -hmm. five and six o'clock, reserved, eating yeah. That's it. with yeah. my At family. The table. You know, yeah. and, and so, you know, it's always big. I just wish I knew how to do it. <laughs> but but oh, I have some recipes and I have things. That <laughs> yeah, he's got the, the best crab cakes in the that, world. Yeah, I thought mine were good, later. but yeah. Father Jim is going to show uh, us how to do it. We are going to have you know, fun. So. Other religions celebrate uh, this holiday as well, right? But there I are mean, a, just, a mass variety. You know, yeah, first of all, we have, that's right, we have Passover. Mm -hmm. And anyone that's been to Passover has seen the amazing food, matzo ball soup, kafilta fish, uh, all, all of things like sense. that. You know, there are, there are um, other traditions within the faith community, like for instance, um, the hot cross buns. Yeah, sure. Uh, the Easter yeah. basket, the Easter egg. Easter egg. All started I mean, in the pagan land. traditions yeah. and got adopted by the various Just religions. gone through, you know, yeah. and, and it's Tradition amazing. after tradition. Exactly. Even spring lamb was, was a, yeah. uh, a Jewish tradition. And then right. there's wine and wafers. <laughs> <laughs> but even more wine. than, well, yeah, yes, yes. And, and, and lots of that, you know, so. Hey, here, uh, I'm with you on that. That's right. right. <laughs> well, we're going to do crab cakes today. Father Jim's. The crab cakes, guys. No, like I said, I thought my crab cakes were great, but Father oh, Jim's you're very kind, are great. Yeah. And you know what the secret is? Don't put too much stuff in them. He's like, Jeremy, this I'm going to show you how to nice. make crab cakes that John Bash showed me how to make, right. and there's just no better crab cake recipe than this. All right. Well, we'll be back and we'll chat some more. We're not finished with this. No, not at all. Yeah. yeah, you know, we still have to lobby him, although <laughs> I'm sounding like that opening in Richmond might be more fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> anyway, we'll be back after break with Food News and Chews. Thank you. Worldly influenced, locally inspired, Azure Restaurant and Patio, contemporary fine dining in a relaxed atmosphere right here in Lexington. Modern award-winning dishes with a distinctive Kentucky twist from the mind of nationally recognized chef Jeremy Ashby. Voted best fine dining in Lexington, Azure is chef created, chef driven, and Kentucky proud since day one. Taste something unique at Azure Restaurant and Patio, Beaumont Center in Lexington. And see chef Jeremy Ashby and Sylvia Lovely on the Food News and Chews, Sunday night at 11 on Fox 56. Hello, my name is Bob. Recently, I switched my business phone service to Glow Telecom. Now I'm saving over 50% on my monthly phone bills, over $2,000 a year. And I have a PBX phone system that would have cost me over $10,000. Unlimited calling to the U.S. and Canada with no long distance charges. If you want to put money back in your wallet, 
Call Glow Telecom today. Call Glow Telecom at 888-428-0984. 888-428-0984. Why do chefs choose Lion's Farm beef? When I get things in the kitchen, I can tell like right off the bat. After I get done searing it or put it on the grill or roasting it or baking it or frying it or whatever I'm going to do, the second I cut into that thing, whether it's uh, you know the resistance on the fork or just the way it kind of slides across the knife, it's got to be right on from the get-go. And it seems like this, this beef does that every single time. Lions Farm Beef, available at Critchfield Meats and lionsfarm.com. Welcome back to Food News and Chews, and Father Jim. He's gonna going do to some show crab us cakes. how to make the best crab yeah. cake that there is. Now, Father Jim yeah. is a very good friend of Je Chef John Besh out of New Orleans, and he's right. totally cool. When it comes to crab cakes, a guy from New Orleans, I'm not going to mess with. So these guys are going to show me the recipe. So when I got the ingredients, Father Jim said, "Jeremy, you have to have this jumbo lump ah. crab." These, these huge clusters right here, now, if you can see. Now, is this cooked crab already? This is already cooked. They okay. cook it at sea, but if you notice, they take the, the top off the crab, and there's these clusters that kind of set up like yeah. this. And I'm not messing with the clusters. You know, Father Jim said, do not break okay. the clusters up. circumstances. He said, take half and of the clusters. And he can send you to bad places. <laughs> That's right. He said, take half the good clusters, Jeremy, and put them in another bowl. And then the important part is, because you, you want to bite into a crab cake and have big pieces of lump crab, you, you can know, get reserve this at those. Kroger's or any you, kind you're of gonna, grocery store? You're going to have a hard time finding this quality yeah. at, a, uh -huh. at a grocery store. Okay. You want to talk to your fishmonger or All actually right. Lexington Seafood, they can order this for sure. you. Okay. So don't be gentle with it, right? right. This right. part of the crab meat, you really want to break it up. In fact, let's just get in here with oh, our so hands. So half of it you, you hop in. Not that oh, one, not oh. that right. one. This one. Really push it together. He said, don't, don't mess with those because you right. want the big lumps big of crab, lumps, right? But then you want this shredded. Right. Now we're going to add a little mayo. Some people call it aioli if you want to be fancy. But notice there's not much in these crab cakes, That's right? That's right. I was just about to say, don't, a bit. don't add this. <laughs> That's a big no-no. Oh, so this you put, uh, is how much bread is this? crumbs. Right. Do not add those. That would be a filler. And we don't use fillers in, our, in your crab cakes, no. right? How much no. uh, mayo did you put in there? I'd say that's got to be, you know, like a half a cup, okay. and you can, you know, really, really give it some, some fun there. I okay. usually say enough. Enough, enough. yeah, right. until yeah. it's ready. Well, right. you know, mayo's pretty good stuff. So very few ingredients in the best crab cakes. A little bit of chopped parsley because you want that bright green, fresh flavor. You really don't want to disguise the crab, mm -hmm. though, right? And you want that crab there evident. Evident, yeah. very evident. You know, well, I, there's nothing worse than ordering crab cakes and having nothing but breading. Right. Seriously, you know. You know? It really, seriously, because you made a big deal about that. that is I do. Terrible. I mean, if I want a yeah. crab you cake. Want I want taste. to see the crab. I sure. want to taste yeah. the crab. You want to taste it. And it's a good idea to have a little mm. bit of, you know, a little chopped red onion in there too, right? Not too much, but just some. Just enough. And then Father the, the magic ingredient to cut through all that mayonnaise and fat, a nice acid like lemon. Lemon. So a good squeeze of, of lemon right there. Lemon. And more if you like it tart. That's okay. Now the secret here, guys, is you really mm, want to pulverize so this and just really mash it in to where it's just like pasty. I'm ready to eat it right now. Now this is what makes, this kind of texture is what makes it to where you don't need breadcrumbs because it's just mashed together mm -hmm. and it's going to help bind it. Now, Father Jim said this is the most important part. All right, let me pay Add attention. Add the big pieces See, of lump crab. I was so eager. Yeah, he was in digging in. To there, and then he said be gentle. Because we don't crab. want to break them up. No, we're just going to kind of fold these together. Yeah, they're like uh, together. shells almost, aren't they? They yeah. are. And see, when you bite Look into that, that, it's just sweet. one Look big, big, huge lump of crab. Oh, so yummers. that's all we have to do, he said. He said, now take your big scoop and don't make small crab cakes. Nobody that's wants like a small cream, crab yeah. cake. And scoop right into Look at that. the breading. Now we do that. The breading just goes Pink. on the outside. That's panko, right? So you see, just kind of put this on the and outside. those are panko crumbs, right? Yeah, these are panko bread crumbs. But you could use any kind of Look bread. And then that. kind of squeeze it together. Oh, so nice. inside you've got these big pieces of lump Gosh. crab. And we'll just set those over there. Uh -oh. See how it fell apart a little bit? It's okay. It's, right. it's okay. It's Push okay. it back together. That means it's real juicy. Now we're going to make up a bunch of these and then go cook them. That's right. Sound good? Sounds, Sounds great, great All right, to me. Yeah. All right, guys. So we got uh, Father Jim's crab cakes. They're breaded here. They're ready to go. Mm. Notice there's not a whole lot of breading just on the outside, right? right? At the... Father Jim says so, and we obey Father Jim. That's, That's right. right. Now, notice something. Mm -hmm. Sylvia, what? look at the oil. That's right. It, it's not as deep as you would suspect. Right. I, we yeah, are, I was going to, yeah. We're right. going to shallow What's fry these instead of deep fry them because nobody wants a big soggy fried crab cake. It has to be nice and light on the nice. outside. Oh, as opposed so, to like the Scottish egg that Right. You did. Now, yeah. test your oil by sprinkling a little bit of your breading in there and make sure it's ah. sizzling. Make sure it's hot enough so mm -hmm. it's good. 
Which then it's doing. Lay your crab cakes away from you so they don't splash yeah, back at yeah. you. And we're just gonna kind of brown the outsides. So if you notice, I'm not gonna mess with these. I'm just gonna put them in there nice and lightly. Look, Father Jim's doing it. Yep. And once they get brown on the bottom, we'll flip them over and then into the oven for about 10 minutes. You have That's to understand, Sylvia, I do this for 40 days during Lent. All oh, right, so I'm just <laughs> letting you know, I got it down. I have got it down. <laughs> hey, uh, what about the uh, eating uh, fish on Friday stuff? That's right. Fish on Fridays was more of a form of penance for the individual. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, if you notice that there were often times that uh, the Christian wasn't able to share that they were Christian due to persecution, so they would make a fish symbol in, in the sand, yeah, okay. and the fish is a symbol of the Christianity. Wow, that was yeah. fast. <laughs> well, we get, just got them brown on our crab cake, a nice little brown on all sides. Mm -hmm. Then it goes in the oven for about 10 minutes and cooks in the inside. All the, the, the fresh herbs come out. The onion flavor kind of pierces through it. The acid kind of, you know, brightens up the mayonnaise. So here's a quick presentation. Um, what do you think so far, Father Jim? Brilliant. Right on, right on point with the rest of me? Even better. Good, good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to use is a little key lime Caesar. Ooh. A lot of people like an aioli or a mayonnaise Great. with their crab cake. So we're going to use more of a dressing. Uh, put that down and then I've got a little vinaigrette here I'm going to lightly dress some greens with because nice fresh greens and crab cakes go together great. Capri. Lightly toss those up. Little radish, little on Is this how you serve yours Father Jim? A, mm, yeah. yeah. It'll, some, it'll meet approval. Yep. So a little petite pile of those down. Look at that. Perfect. Nice and fresh. The crab cake can of course garnish the top. These are nice and gooey the way we like them. Yes. yes. Yummers a little bit more of the lettuce on top. And then, you know, Father Jim said, Jeremy, you, you have to serve something crunchy right. with your crab cake, you know, something you could dip into and give a little texture with your salad. So we're gonna use a little bit of a plantain, a little fried plantain mm -hmm. for fun and douse the top. Can you buy fried plantains or do you have to Well, you have to make them yourself, yeah. but you can buy plantains in most grocery stores now. They look like bananas, but they're a little bit, you know, crunchier. Ooh, now, the last pretty. thing I like to use and Father Jim gave me a hard time about this one, but you know, I thought it would go well as a little bit of a, a Spanish condiment called Romesco. And this What's is a puree of peppers and hazelnuts and almonds <gasps> and chilies. And I think it just goes great on crab cakes. Oh. I think you guys need to test it for me and make sure that uh, we met Not the approval. Jim. Yeah, you better, better go to the source over well, here. Well, you know, first, bless this food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what oh, doing? can I? May Please I? Please dig in, see what you think. Brilliant. To make it? Brilliant. All right. Brilliant. So hopefully John Besh will approve too. Oh, so good. brilliant. <laughs> good. Well, good. It's been great to cook with you guys. Oh, thank, thank you for you. teaching me your craft. Oh, yeah. thank, thank you, you for too. allowing me to be here. This is, this is indeed a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. We'll be back next week. your product or service on shows like this one. Contact Media 7 Broadcasting today. Call 859-317-4565 or email sales at m7bg.com. Reach potential new customers in the Louisville, Lexington, and other Central Kentucky areas. Get your new ad produced for free by Media 7's audio and video professionals. Call 859-317-4565 today and let Media 7 create a marketing plan for you.